Hello and thanks for joining me in this video. We're going to be getting this bike sorted out. The tank will be resprayed. I'll make a separate video about that. But before we get to the respray, we will have to prep the tank up and painting is all about preparation. What I'm going to show you in this video is the tank off. You already saw me take the tank off in a separate video. This is the project of getting this motorcycle back on the road. So it's every step of the journey. So thank you for joining me. And if you check the description, you'll see the last episode in this series. What I'm doing right now is the tank already had a bit of a dodgy spray job. Someone's had a rattle can to it and I could see there's a multiple layers of paint on it. So what I will need to do right now is find out where we stand. So I'm actually checking the underside of the tank. Someone coated it in like a black tar. So I've got some uh, stuff that's going to help me clean the tank up. But to start off with, let's get a quick look at underside of the tank and inside the tank as well. We did a few of these checks already. Uh, it's got a, quite a lot of surface rust on the circle there and the, the cap. So where we put the fuel in. Uh, you can see it's got a gold yellow paint around here. So I know underneath the blue, I'm expecting at least another yellow gold color. And then underneath that, I don't know what's going to happen, but you may have seen in the intro, I actually find four layers of paint on this. So I'm glad we're going back to steel. So the idea here is, you'll see I've used some of this Bart O-Line TX10 paint stripper. It's like a, not industrial level, but it's good for removing stripper from varnish and paint. So you can use it in multiple scenarios. It's a non-drip formula. It's quite a thick, uh, like a gooey white pasty type thing. So what they advise is you actually just uh, dollop it onto the bodywork and let it rest. Um, they suggest an hour, but I found leaving it for longer worked even better. So my first little test, I put a few dollops on and left it and uh, was looking to see how well it will do. And it was actually good, but I am contemplating, should I have used this as opposed to just sanding it down? So I think on the underside, definitely it was a good option because there's too many curves and odd bits to get to with the sandpaper and hand it would have taken ages. Maybe the top of the tank, I don't think I would have had to use this. Um, it's a good option. It's a non-methylene chloride formulation. So it's not like an intense chemical, but you can see I dolloped a little bit on there and left it and see how well it does the next day. It's like a, hence uh, no waste because it's like a dollop, you dollop it on and it stays where you put it. So that was a test and the next day I got my workbench out and I started getting it full on intensified. So what you're going to next see is a, a culmination of about four days of this. So it's not a quick process. I find leaving it overnight, the actual stripper worked a lot better than leaving it for an hour, which is what the bottle suggests. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them. I just bought that because it was like a good deal on, uh, I think I bought it on Amazon. It was like £19, 99 pence, so about 20 ish dollars, $25. Um, you can get Nitro Morse. I used that in the past. If you remember my channel far back enough, I'll put a link in the card. I did a repaint of alloy wheels for my Honda Civic 13 years ago, I think it was. And that was the first video on this channel. So that's like a historic video where I already had some understanding of paint. So this isn't my first time. Um, we will be going through this as a step-by-step -step process. So we're going to clean everything out. We're going to take all of it back to paint, uh, back to metal. And then we're going to start using etch primer. We're going to get some uh, normal primer. We might have to do a bit of filling. And I have a sneaky suspicion that this tank might have a bit of damage and it's been filled in the past. Because I did notice on the bike, there's some signs that it has been dropped. So, presuming that's right, then there will be some damage underneath this. Um, I was thinking of keeping it silver, as in chrome, just the metal color, polishing it up and uh, clear coating it. But when I find that filler underneath the tank, I think I can't do that. Again, this is a Honda 1979 motorcycle. So, here you see a bit of a time lapse. This is like literally four hours of time lapsing. Um, I have got a few projects on, on the side, so I'm not only doing the tank. I am doing the carbs and there's other bits that need doing. So I left this on one side. I think if I was sanding it, I would have had to dedicate more time to it. But having it in this situation where I just left the time lapse running so you can see how it works. Uh, about four hours, the paste, I just kept reapplying paste and paste. The top coat, you'll see I've got a couple of lights on and I left the action camera on uh, time lapse mode. So sometimes the quality differs from my cameras because I'm using that. It's easier basically to leave a camera there to show you how it's uh, doing its thing. You'll see there in that literally like four hours, I went through and put it on about three or four times. I dolloped some more on there. 
and the top paint they used the blue they put a really thick coat on so it was quite difficult to get through that but as I got through it it's a good option and as always keep a good eye on your work and see how it's doing so take your time don't rush it if you're in a rush then yeah it's not going to turn out right so I know I need to get it back to bare metal get a couple of extra hands on there if you can to get it dolloped up and the stripper worked quite well considering uh, the nitro most that I used in my alloys back in the day that was a decent option as well um, but as long as, as long as you dollop it and don't thin it out too much don't paint it on dollop it on you'll be good and then you can use a scraper and scrape away all the old paint and as we scrape it away you will see the remnants of the old colors so here's another time lapse again I did it multiple times this is like over four days I think in total but you'll see now it's slowly getting the the top had the most amount of dolloping and that was able to come out nicely so underneath that is like a goldy yellow color um, and then underneath that I saw red and underneath that I saw white and then the undercoat and then I saw some additional uh, exciting news which you'll see as I get through the video and yeah so what I'm using here is just a, a normal like a dish brush it's got bristles and I'm using a plastic container that's disposable it's like a bottle cut in half that's where I put the solution in and I was just using that as the main source of applying uh, wear gloves I think because the paint when it comes off is very sticky and is very odd so try and use it in an area where you're not worried about I put a bit of extra I think it's an old sheet or something we had a, a bunch of them in the garage and I put them underneath and um, but looking at it you can see multiple coats they are well yeah it's just what it is isn't it so you can see as you scrape it you'll you're gonna not get straight down to the bottom but over time it will work better and better and I did find using a wire brush set I got like a brass steel and a black brush set from uh, Amazon and I might put links of these in the description so if you're going through this journey yourself you can check the links out to the things I've brought and how they did because you can actually see here how they're doing so you can see it helps quite nicely and it does get through the the top coat so what they applied on top was like a thick blue color I ended up using an old mug uh, using different um, ratios so what I mean by that is like I'll put a big dollop on in certain spots and then I'll go down to a small dollop and then check which works better but this is as I say working what I will do is I'll leave you with a, a number of these uh, updates so you can see them as they progress I will actually put another version of this video up without me talking over it and just have one full video of the full strip so if you want to see it uh, go through like a full stage of how it till it it look good in uh, like a time lapse uh, I always had the wire brush on hand I had a, a little attachment for my uh, drill as well so around the fuel cap I did find it was a hard spot to get so I used like a, a drill mesh wire brush set, set kind of thing so you can drill it on and it was getting in that hard to reach places I did find that as I was using it it was watering up so it was actually creating water from the atmosphere I'm assuming and then it was like coming off the tank which might be the formula working or reacting to the paint but you'll see as the top got more attention that was easier but the sides I didn't do as much uh, dolloping on and um, so what I did do is I put the tank on its side and then work through that step by step and you can see slowly as it progresses how we got through the situation and the painting some tips I would give you if you're thinking about this use a, a location where it's nice and open possibly it's not there's not a smell but this stuff falls off and it gets everywhere so I put an old sheet underneath it and it did work well the colors what we will be doing is when I'm going back to bare metal I'm realizing that if I leave it at bare metal it may start rusting so I was actually using WD-40 and the bits that have been done and just spraying that on to avoid it like being uh, contaminated or getting instant rusting um, I will be washing and cleaning the tank so that will be like the next step which they recommend after this and then also using a degreaser to get rid of this when we get ready for paint I have already picked out a paint color uh, I will share that in the next video but remember right now we are just doing the tank we have got the two side panels that will need to be sorted out as well I will do them as a separate video because they're plastic and it may be easier to show you those separately this is mainly getting your tank ready for paint and I will be rattle can spraying it so like a spray can in the garage a DIY job um, I'll show you how I do it I'm hoping it'll come out with decent results but you never know here's a little wire brush that I've been talking about and I'm using that around the fuel cap area to get into those hard to read places 
the solution is doing good because it's allowing me to get right into those gaps and get rid of all that few, uh, old remnants of paint. What I have also got is I actually got a uh, etch primer. I've got fuel resistant clear coat, which is what we'll apply on the color we've chosen. I've got extra primer, I've got filler, I've got some sandpaper, which I'm gonna use to fill up some little divots and dents I can see in the tank. So that will be exciting. So be stay tuned for that. Uh, as we go through this, there will be little sections that need extra attention. So that's what I'm using the wire brush. Make sure to check out the description. I will be linking you to the next video in this series where we'll do the side panels. And I'm going to leave you with a slight bit of a time lapse of the remaining process here. And that will show you how we're getting on. Again, thank you to Trusted Creators for allowing me to get this project up. We will also be doing the, the fuel cap. So also the fuel cap needed a bit of attention. I used the wire brush just to get rid of that rust and make that a bit more presentable. There is an alloy uh, aluminium little tab that goes over the fuel cap which we're going to pay attention to separately So that was that section. Hopefully you found that useful. I'll see you on the next video here, which will actually take you on the next section of this project.